Hey you guys, it's me Gemstone. I hope you're doing really well. This video is basically me showcasing my collection of tarot decks uh, made by black creators featuring black people. Now, um, this is a really special time in tarot, I, I feel, because there's so many creators that are coming out from communities that we're not used to seeing um, their interpretations of tarot. And um, I really think that we have to show more support to um, these creators in order to not only encourage more <laughs> to, you know, start creating decks and all that other stuff, but also because of the fact of, of the lack of representation anyway, um, within the tarot community and also just within a number of different communities and industries where, you know, we just don't see enough diversity and we just don't see enough uh in terms of you know black uh creatives uh really given the shine that they deserve i think especially in the uk it's really difficult um and, and it just shows up in so many facets where you uh have people that are very talented and that have a form of expression where you know they want to uh, get out there and um obviously want people to enjoy their creations and you just kind of see that there isn't this kind of uh support and backing and a push in order for you know those creations to really get out there and to be seen you know by the masses and um that's why i, I am really grateful to uh people within this community that do make a point of sharing and um making videos but showing these kind of decks and also uh to other people that are sort of allies in these this to these communities as well um i know ally is a bit of a <laughs> weird kind of word to use um but those that that support and that also raise the voices of marginalized people um the, you know it's a uh, not that long ago, um, Beth from um, Little Red Tarot uh, basically sent around uh, an email saying that she's going to mainly focus her um, store where she sells indie decks um, by different creators, uh, but she's, she's going to scale it back. So she wasn't going to include some of the other decks because she used to sell sometimes like um, animal theme decks and decks, all different kinds of decks. I guess maybe ones that were that either she felt some kind of connection to, or um, you know, maybe she just thought you know might be might sell quite well. So she would um, sell them on her site, which is based in the UK. So obviously for us over here, you know, her her site is amazing because we have to pay so much in terms of shipping and tax and all this other stuff that they add to uh, like customs or whatever that they add to the price when you have to buy from abroad and um obviously uh, the decks that she was able to get and sell sort of helped us to sort of cut out all that and be able to just buy directly from her uh but it kind of seemed that when it she put out this email saying that she was going to be scaling her um, stock back and that she was mainly going to be focusing on um, people from, you know, the uh, creators uh, that um, are from the LGBTQIA plus community and um, uh, ethnic minorities and like these kind of creators it kind of caused a little bit of a stir <laughs> in um, one of the tarot groups that I'm a part of. And to me, it was a little bit disappointing, a little bit disappointing to kind of read um, comments uh, where people kind of felt like this was a bad thing for them um, without really thinking about 
well, what about the communities that struggle with being represented in the first place? And you think to yourself in this current age where, you know, we're back talking more openly about, you know, race and um, discrimination. And you think to yourself, there should, you shouldn't have to explain still <laughs> why this is important and why, you know, uh, you're going to get people that feel um, like, okay, I, I want to support these other communities as well because it's like where do we get support otherwise you know and so um i just think it's, it's an amazing time in tarot that we you know that i even have a collection <laughs> of decks to choose from um that are all created by people that look like myself and when i use these decks i can connect with them on a level that is kind of different to some, a lot of the other decks that I have um, because of the fact that there there is this kind of um, uh, sort of a, something that resonates on a deeper level because of that sort of cultural connection that exists as well, you know, so. Okay, hey you guys, now I'm back downstairs. <laughs> Because it was just too dark, like trying to um, show the cards upstairs. I don't know, it was just coming out really blurry. So, okay, the first one we're going to do, do I have all of them here? I think so. Okay, okay the first one we're going to do is this one that's at the top here. And as you can see, it has this really cute little bag. Now, I didn't buy this bag. <laughs> um, the person I bought this deck from bought this bag and uh, sent it to me in it. So this is actually the first um, Dust to Onyx um, because uh, <laughs> I missed out the first time uh, when the first edition came out and really that was entirely and totally my own fault why I missed out on it uh basically I I hadn't supported any form of kickstarter campaign before at the time when Duster Onyx was coming out so I was kind of unsure about supporting it because I knew that with the kickstarter you may not get your money back <laughs> if the creation doesn't come to form, basically. And so being that I was new to Kickstarter and it was, you know, again, there, there was this uncertainty. I was a bit like, mm, should I give it a go? Should I not? Even though, like, I really like this deck. And there was another deck around the time that was coming out as well. That was also by a black uh, creator also. And... <laughs> in the end it's funny how the universe works isn't it in the end i supported the other campaign didn't support this one and that campaign didn't end up coming into fruition like the deck did not happen <laughs> so i lost my money and then um and then in the end uh i was kind of scrambling to get this one by that time it was so popular it basically was like it it sold out um with me being in two months it was just really strange it was really stupid and then i felt like an idiot afterwards and then i was like pleading with people um in like the tarot trade groups and that's just the main uh card that they just put in just because um asking them oh like can somebody take pity on me and sell me theirs <laughs> so i managed to find this lady that um took pity on me and she sold me her one um she didn't keep the book though and the box and i was fine with that i was like i don't mind as long as i have the cards it's fine so um she sent me the cards she had kind of changed the book into like um to sort of put it into like a pdf kind of form i guess because maybe she was just preserving space like storage space so she didn't want to keep the box and the book i love the eight of wands um but this is the eight of staffs in this this deck um i love i love it because it's usually a positive card um 
but the artwork in this deck is just so gorgeous and beautiful i just love it and it's one that connects deeply um on a spiritual and ancestral level like this is not a deck i would reach for just to do like a, a random silly question like what's gonna happen tomorrow when i go to the store and such as like i wouldn't like you can't ask mundane questions <laughs> with this deck like this is more of a deck that you go to when you have something deeply spiritual um you want to connect with your ancestors you're looking for like um you could use this as a mediumship deck as well um because it it works it works for these kind of really bigger kind of things where you're going more into depth and um so it, it really is something special to work with on that kind of spiritual level to really... Oh, I love this card so much. I'm really connecting with it the more. That would be traditionally the Hierophant. I love that. Like, it's... um yeah it's it's really one that is it's not for your everyday kind of mundane matters at all so i've been working more with it and um for that reason of sort of like uh connecting with uh my ancestors and i i, I feel like it just it speaks so clearly even though obviously the, this artwork is is very different from you know like a let's say a right away or one of those more traditional decks that we're used to it's definitely one that speaks to my intuition really deeply as well so i love that one so this was my first one and then because like i said i messed i messed it up <laughs> and ended up with this one which you know came with obviously no book no box I then felt compelled to get the second edition so that I could get the box and the book. And the book is like, oh my God, like the book is so well written. And I just love, what I love about the decks that I'm showing you as well is there's quite a few of them where they really have put time and effort into every aspect of the packaging and everything else and this is one of them like even when you touch it it's so smooth to touch so it's almost like it it takes it from beyond just being like a tarot deck to kind of being like this really lovely like almost like sensory experience <laughs> like where you just like this i'll show you the um afro goddess deck and i'm the same way with that one as well just like i am with this one in that i literally take it out sometimes just to touch it <laughs> just to like touch like because it just feels really nice so it's like I, I just love that they've just thought about all those things like all these little details like like putting these like strings like to get your page and all this other stuff it's like it's the little things that make it it's just that much more like nice and like luxurious <laughs> okay because of time i won't read it through because i feel like i'm gonna i'm gonna take too long and i've got a lot to show you so that's the book and obviously the deck um in the second edition the card quality is slightly different slightly um but it's still really nice. I, I kind of feel like these ones are not as thick as the first edition ones. Um, but they, they do shuffle really well. And so does the first edition shuffle really well. Which I appreciate a lot as well. Because sometimes you buy indie decks and they look gorgeous. But when it comes to shuffling, sometimes the cards are really thick. <laughs> and even though it's like that's good in terms of like your cards won't crease and stuff. But then at the same time, it can make it quite difficult to shuffle as well. So I do like it when, um, you know, it's kind of like a good in-between, like where the cards are not too thin, but they're not too thick at the same time. Now, over here, I have the Hoodoo Tarot, which is by Tatiana Lee McQuellen. Did I even say it's Courtney Alexander that makes the dust, dust to Onyx? I forgot to say her name. I'm sorry. This Courtney Alexander that does the dust to Onyx. I really love her work. Her work is just, oh, it just, it resonates so deeply. Um, Courtney Alexander's work. 
but this is Tatiana Lee McQuellen and this is the Hoodoo Tarot and it's a 78 card deck. I went for a period where I was using this quite a bit. I haven't recently because again I've accumulated a number of decks, a number <laughs> of decks. Um, so much so that it's, it's true, you don't spend as much time working, even with the decks that you really, really like, you don't spend a lot of time with them. So this deck, um, I bought this more with the intention of learning a bit more about hoodoo um, as, a, as a practice. And um, the artwork in this deck is really gorgeous. It's one as well that... Um, yes, it does stray from what we traditionally see, but then at the same time, um, if you're an intuitive reader, then you will love this deck because I just feel like it's another one of those that does speak to my intuition. So I don't necessarily feel like, oh, I'm looking at these images and I'm like lost, you know, but I think that also speaks to obviously how long I've been reading for and, and, you know, when you are, you know, more experienced, um, you know, you can you find it easy to read all different things because you learn to read the symbols versus um, rely so heavily on just the traditional meanings um, of the cards. But even then, you memorize those as well. So then it becomes easier to sort of use different types of decks, even when they're not, uh, you know, the, the usual um, style. But um, it's... Uh, what would I say about this one? I mean, I'm not going to lie. What did kind of give me a bit of pause with this deck is I do find some of the cards to be a little bit eerie. And I'm that kind of person that I don't like things that are scary. <laughs> like, I'm not a horror movie kind of person. I'm not none of those things. Like, some of these cards are, like, really just beautiful and lovely and, and they're not scary at all. But then I think there's, like, one or two in there that are a little bit eerie for me. And, um, like, that one could be a little bit eerie, but it's not, like, it doesn't put me off. It doesn't make me feel any kind of way. Like, this one is eerie to me. It's a bit, but it's not meant to be. It's, um, it's the ancestor card. So it's kind of speaking to, you know, how, like, a little baby is born, but, um, she has, like, the spirit of her ancestors that's, like, you know, also that she's a part of and that's also a part of her. So it has a really nice meaning when you like kind of go into it from the book's perspective. But then just to look at it, it is like a little bit like, oh my God, <laughs> for, for me. But again, that's just because of the kind of person that I am. I'm, you know, I, I, I'm not good with certain like imagery. And that's why for a long time, it took me a while to really venture into like more kind of shadow kind of decks that's the gorgeous card she looks a bit like naomi campbell the woman in this card um yeah it took me a while to venture into sort of sort of shadow kind of types of decks you know but then i understood that it was it's important um especially a part you know if if you do tarot and you're also like a spiritualist and all this kind of stuff it's important to venture into these images as well at times that make you feel a bit uncomfortable um because of the fact of um it's, it's good to seek out what about it makes you feel uncomfortable why is it uncomfortable um like sometimes you can you know if you really do the work and really sort of dissect these things you can come to like some really <laughs> um interesting insights about yourself you know why why do you uh, respond to certain imagery the way you do you know um and to me that's the whole point of tarot it's, it's not just to be used as a tool to predict uh, what's going to happen in your life um, which is all well and good to use it for that purpose but it's, it also is a spiritual tool as well that way that you can very much use to delve really deep into some really um, unventured like territory in your own like subconscious mind you know like that's an image that I know in my early stages of tarot I would have looked at that and been like mm -mm. <laughs> I can't I can't with a deck that looks that has this kind of imagery um, I was I was very like love and light when I first got into tarot and it's like over time you know I kind of broke more out of that and um, you know was really able to appreciate other types of imagery and um, kind of use them for different purposes 
like this is a deck that you can use for day-to-day -day, um kind of questions and things but then at, you know at the same time you can definitely use it for much deeper um you know work as well uh so yeah it's a, it's a nice one for both purposes really so that is the who do tarot so let me just put this over here and this one is a the, the hoodoo tarot is a mass produced which i really appreciate and it comes with this really good book like a good thick kind of book and i feel like it is a good starting point for learning about you know the, getting the general sense of what hoodoo is but obviously you do have to go away and do a lot more research and a lot more things but it's a good just just a starting um starting point so let's put this over here and then we have the melanated classic tarot deck and i hope i don't mess up the name um but it's julia goldsby and Aubria tronshore that's how i'm pronouncing it i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing it wrong um i like this deck for the fact of it is a rider weight deck but it is um it features all people of color in it now what i like about it is it's not that they just literally um put the artwork onto the card and just you know gave them a different skin tone uh the artwork literally is different in terms of you you know that they do have features that are um you know associated with black people you know like i love the hairstyles um i love the outfits i you know it's just really gorgeous i love the face that is in the three of swords you know this the cardstock in this deck is not um terribly thick but um some may say it's a tiny bit on the thinner side but for me it's not too bad it's not too thin and at least you you can get a good shuffle on the cards which to me is the most important thing really can can it shuffle really well i mean at this point because i have quite a few decks um it's not like it's gonna wear out <laughs> you know anytime soon for me but i can understand that if for, for people that like have few decks and they um use it obviously the same ones over and over again you kind of want your deck to be really durable uh but like i said for me it's not too bad so this deck is just a really gorgeous one i love the coloration of the deck as well the colors are really bold they stand out a lot so Oh, I like this one. <laughs> Empress. Gorgeous. I know my camera is trying to be blurry, which is really annoying. The focus is really weird. Okay. And I'll hold it back. It kind of looks a bit better. So, yes. This one is one that you can get on Little Red Tarot um, website. Um, the Duster Onyx. God, I'm doing this in all kinds of weird order. <laughs> The Duster Onyx is going to be um, going into its third uh, print. Um, so then you'll be able to get that soon. And then, um, yeah, and then the Hoodoo Tarot is a mass producer. Oh, I'm looking my water over. <laughs> is a mass producer. You can get that on Amazon. The Melanated Classic, um, I believe you can still get it from their site. But then also you can get it from the Little Red Tarot if you're in the UK. And this one you can also get from Little Red Tarot as well, which is the Melanade Stand Tarot. Now this deck was originally called um, the Brown Girl Tarot. You guys may have seen years ago. I did like a review. that noise okay sounds like noise outside 
Okay. <laughs> so yeah, you would have um, seen this deck. Who is? You would have seen this deck um, before my channel. Um, it's it was called the Brown Girls Tarot. Now it's called um, Melanie's Stand Tarot, and it's gorgeous. These are photographs, as you can see, but. Um, I like it because it's just very, it's a very welcoming kind of deck. It's a really kind of like one where you feel like you're with your friends and you're having a conversation about your life's problems. <laughs> so it kind of feels like a girlfriend kind of, it has that kind of feel to it, which makes it really like comforting. I, I find, you know, especially in times of difficulty when you're looking for your community, like just like this picture and you're looking for your community and you just want to, you know, sit or vent and have a chat and all this kind of stuff. This deck kind of has that feel to it. So it's really fun. Um, it's a really nice one. That's a really gorgeous image. God, I'm really connecting with the Empress. Empress energy. A lot of these decks, like the Empress card is so gorgeous. That's a really nice one as well. So, yeah, this one I've had for a while. And um, it is a, I think all the cards seem to be the same. Like it, when you uh, order these, uh, if you order uh, one now. Um, because I had supported it originally when it was on its um, Indiegogo campaign. Um, it had like a crystal and it had a Palo Santo stick that she had put with it. With me, when I get like a crystal with the deck, um, I usually tend to just keep the crystal with it. Um, almost like it's, you know, it's companion kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this clear quartz is always in this bag. The bags are different now. Um, it's not this kind of satin kind of uh, bag. It kind of has like a thicker cotton um that you get now with it uh, which is still nice and it's still brown in color so um i'll show you the afro goddess bag because it's more kind of that kind of texture it's like this kind of texture to it like um the way the bag looks for the melanade stand in the newer one like version so still a really gorgeous deck i have to i have to kind of circle back around and start using these decks more because that's what i'm saying when you accumulate like a lot of stuff <laughs> a lot of decks and things is then like you you're not using even the ones that you really love you're not using them that often so this one is the afro goddess tarot Okana, which is like one of these ones like i told you i just i take this deck out <laughs> literally like to touch like the bag and the box and the cards is really like it's a whole experience <laughs> with these decks um and i love when a deck does come with a bag as well i do really like that i think it's a nice addition um and this one comes with a box and a bag so you get both depending on what you like the most and um the box is really gorgeous so really gorgeous box and it has a little magnet to help it close you can open it up um, it doesn't have the little pulley thing in in there but you can just shake it out like i did and it has this book i love the colors and stuff that's so like used it's just so lovely and you have the cards and cells which is gilded like you could see the um duster onyx was gilded as well with the nice kind of gilding you know the matte gold gilding which is always really nice this is 
another deck that again it feels like a like a girlfriend as well it just is a really comforting kind of deck um it's like i would put this one and um the melan the melanated classic kind of um together um in that it does kind of uh follow the right of weight so um it does feel in some ways like it's kind of like a rendition of that kind of work but then as you can see it has other cards that are like totally different like this card is so freaking gorgeous <laughs> like she's giving that sort of sexy jessica rabbit kind of feel this is oh my god i love it but then it has a snake as well it's like temptation desire passion sexiness lust like there's so much you can get out of that image and then on top of that it's the seven of swords which is usually like uh, uh you wouldn't associate um these kind of like that kind of imagery with the seven of swords but that's why i also love different interpretations um when it comes to tarot because it just keeps it fun and it keeps it interesting and it also helps you to sort of build up your own knowledge and also gives you a different perspective on these kind of more traditional ways that we tend to read and and view certain cards you know and like this one is a is a slightly different interpretation well this is a, actually i'll take that back i'll <laughs> i'll say this is a slightly different interpretation because i didn't look at the name of the card underneath it kind of has that feel that is kind of like the the four of um cups but obviously it doesn't have four cups in it anyways because it's the son of cups which would be the page so um some of the imagery does venture off like the traditional oh my gosh but it's just so gorgeous i mean look at it look at it <laughs> wow that's what i said i feel like we're just so blessed to like live in a time where we have these kind of decks because to me they just they just resonate on a level that is just like it's a joy to use it's like they're exciting to use them because the, you know there was a time especially for me in tarot where something like this like it just didn't exist like you couldn't get anything like this and so you know, to have it now, it's just like, oh my gosh. Like, it's just such a powerful image. Oh, wow. Like, these creators, they're just so talented. Really talented. Oh my gosh. Like, look at this. Justice. Look at that. It's amazing. <laughs> And I love the backs of these as well. It's like, it's kind of shiny and they feel nice too. They have, she has the, the version that is in pink. <laughs> I thought to myself, I'm not gonna lie. If, I, if that version came out before I got this one, I would have definitely got the pink one. A part of me wants to still get the pink one, but because I really love the black. The black is gorgeous, but I'm such a girly girl as well. Like I, I do kind of like the pink one too. And um, this deck, I think I did say you can get it on a uh, little red tarot if you're in the UK. Um, so I know like shipping and stuff is different now, now that we're, you know, going through Brexit and everything else. So oh, that's why I'm just saying the UK before the um, little red tarot used to ship to um, other places in Europe and, and stuff and from what I understood of her last email, I think that's just too difficult for her to do now. So um, this one is, a, this is a fun kind of deck. Okay, it's the Hip Hop Tarot. And it is one of those decks that um, only has the major arcana. And it's by Ben Gurry, I want to say. Gurry? I hope I'm pronouncing it properly. Um, It's Ben G-O-R-E. Oh, girl, I'm not quite sure. Sorry if I'm pronouncing it wrong. But we have um, Beyonce as the world. <laughs> it's so cute. And you have Childish Gambino as the hangman. This deck I got from, I think I bought it from somebody on eBay. But you can get it from Etsy. And it's quite inexpensive. I think it's like £10 or something on Etsy. That's Kanye West as Judgment. <laughs> 
This is Missy Elliott as the moon. Missy Elliott. MF Doom as the higher font. These cards are pretty big. Um, two pack as death. Um, you can shuffle with them, but it's not an easy shuffle because of the size. But then they're not very thick either. So, but they're not terribly thin. They're kind of in between ish. So, um, Kendrick Lamar as the emperor. And Tyler, the creator, as the fool. <laughs> so, like I said, for me, I bought this because it's a fun deck. Old Dirty B. <laughs> as the sun. And because it does, rem you know, th these are, like, some of these artists are people that I either do like their music or kind of remind me of my childhood. Like, ODB reminds me of my childhood. Um, you know, rest in peace. And that's Nicki Minaj as the Hierophant. That was an interesting choice. Nicki as a Hierophant. And Gucci Mane as the devil. So, the deck is really a fun one. Oh, we have DMX in here. I didn't remember. RP DMX as the chariot. So, yeah, it is a really cool and fun kind of deck. And so I like it. And then we have Lauren Hill as Temperance. So, yes. Fun little deck, this one. I don't usually buy many decks that um, are just a major arcana. Um, however, it is nice to have one or two that are like that. Um, just for you to do sort of quick kind of to the point readings with. And um, so sometimes they can be nice to use or they can be nice to use as sort of an addition to maybe using another form of divination. Okay, I've just remembered that there's a deck. It's a playing card deck, um, actually, that I wanted to show you guys as well. So I'm going to have to get that. Um, I forgot it upstairs. This is the Tazama african tarot this is my newest one in this collection and it is just gorgeous as you can see it has this gold that is like oh my gosh it's so gorgeous it's just reflecting on the box and the box is gorgeous this is another one of those decks where it's like it's a sensory experience for me as well like it just feels lovely like it feels luxurious it's, it's really nice um the feel of this deck it is so smooth and uh, when you open it up because um even the duster onyx has um gold uh no was it gold no it's not gold you see that, that's why i don't really do these type of videos because <laughs> i'm remembering things even as we've moved on to like new decks because, um, let me show you. On the Duster Onyx, I mean, you guys would have seen it anyways. Um, you do have um, where it has different textures on the cards on the Duster Onyx. So, as you touch them, you can feel the different textures on the artwork itself. So, that's what makes it also a really nice experience. And it's kind of different um experience to a lot of other tarot cards because you actually do feel the texture on the cards and there's even like parts I, again i'm not usually good at the specifics of things but there is a shine that they've put on some of the cards as well that kind of gives it that kind of reflect and smoothness so all of that is really nice as well like these additional things that we we're not really used to having like um on like decks that's why i just I think it's so amazing that we're getting like these creative people that are making tarot decks because they're sort of adding different elements to it that we're not really used to getting especially you know if, if you have only mass produced decks you know um where you're just not going to experience you know those kind of things the backs of these decks this deck is like so gorgeous to me i love the print that's at the back I don't mind at all that it has like tarot written in the middle because I don't use reversals. It has that gold 
at the back of it as well and with this deck it has a gold it, the gold accents um I, I, before when i was first looking at the deck it just goes to show how much attention i was paying um i was just like oh it has this gold but then as i was like going through it you see that the gold is like a halo around the head of like all the people that you see in the deck so it's like everybody has this halo of gold that i just love that i really love that um it's like one of those things where it's like it it didn't necessarily have to be there but the fact that it is there uh is just like oh it, it just goes to show how much thought is put in to these decks you know like to come up with these additional things you know like oh i love that it just looks so nice <laughs> I love also the color choice. Like, it's just so beautiful. It's really, it is a bold deck. And what's really cool about it is it does kind of have a bit of a color scheme. So depending on the suit uh, that the card is from, it, they will have the same color. Like this kind of orange is for swords. Uh this one isn't a good example for pentacles because obviously it has the grey of the church at the back because it is a deck that, again, is closely linked to the right away in terms of its imagery. Um, but then it's very different to the um, Melanated Classic because this one, I feel like even though you can say that it is a right away inspired deck, um, I think because the fact of that the people, the artwork is kind of like a multimedia artwork, it kind of obviously makes these people feel real, you know, kind of like the way in the Melanade stand, the people are real. So then it gives you sort of a different connection based on that. This deck is kind of the same. It's like because you can look at these people and they look like, you know, real life people, even though you have this kind of you know, made up scene that they're in, um, it just gives you a whole nother like connection with the deck and it just speaks to you in a different kind of way. Like the cups have this blue, which is gorgeous. It almost looks like, you know, when you do the primary colors, um, you know, the, the contrast that you see in the colors kind of thing. It, it kind of feels like that, but, um, Obviously, not all of these colors are primary colors. They did use a lot of different ones as well. But it just helps you visually when you do readings um, to be able to sort of automatically see, okay, this card is from, you know, it's, it's from this suit. There's justice. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. <laughs> that's why, like, to be honest, that's why I wanted to make this video as well because i just really enjoy these decks a lot like a lot and like with every single one of them when they were delivered and i just got to hold them and look through them i was just like blown away like with each and every one because of what what this deck is it is it's just ugh. that's the devil i wish my camera was doing a better job of like really picking up the artwork because it's just I'm I'm not gonna lie my camera is just not even doing these decks justice because it's being a fool <laughs> but I'm gonna get a new phone next month so hopefully it'll be even better so oh it's so gorgeous anyway and this one obviously has a gorgeous gilding as well this the gilding on this one is a bit of like a more burnt gold almost like it's more like of a orangey kind of gold than like um the other two decks that were gilded but this one is just so beautiful <laughs> and again it's a very easy read because of the fact that it is kind of based on the right away but the back oh my gosh it, it's like the back actually feels very like fashion fashiony to me <laughs> 
<laughs> like if this was a top it would just be like it would be really gorgeous and as you can see like putting it against my black top is just really nice it's just really really nice so did i even say who the creator of this deck was or does it just say tizana that's what it says um Oh, hold on. Is that the creator though? To be honest, I should have looked into that before because this is a new deck for me. Um, I don't know as much about the creator. This is production that um is by Charia De Luz Fortez. And Bjorn Franklin, that's production, it says. And the tarot card artwork is by Savara Wanjagi. I pray I'm pronouncing that correctly. Okay. And then they have their site. But what I'm going to do is I'll put their information, the information for all the decks um, in the little description box. This deck is one of those ones that was on my wish list for a while. And originally when it came out, I didn't get it straight away because it, it is a bit more of a pricier deck, you know, for me. So um, what I did is I uh, subscribed to their newsletter and fortunately they um, had some more. Um, I don't know, was it that they printed some more? Because it kind of seemed like they, it was a limited amount that they had. So I don't know if this was like an amount that they just had stored and then put up or, or what. Because it wasn't uh, many um, from what I understood in the newsletter. But then it, they just like sent the newsletter just sort of randomly. And uh, they put them up on Amazon.com. I believe it was .com. Yeah, dot com. And so um, I ordered it from there. And I have to say, Amazon did a really good job of getting, getting the deck to me pretty quickly, quicker than I expected it to arrive anyway. And obviously, um, Amazon makes it easier in terms of uh, the tax and stuff that you have to pay when decks come from abroad, because at least you get to know how much the tax and additional charges are at the time of purchase versus you know, what we sometimes deal with in the UK, which is you get your package first and the um, post office holds it <laughs> and sends you a card saying you have to pay such and such amount, which could be God knows what um, at the time, you know, which is so annoying. But um, so it's much better this way where you just get to pay everything up front. You know how much everything is and then you just get your deck and then you're happy. So um, I'm really glad that they, they um, did it that way, just to make it easier, especially for us that are um, not in the States, you know, because we do love these decks and we do definitely want to keep purchasing and, you know, supporting um, US uh, artists in general. But obviously, you know, I want to also make a point of supporting um, black, uh, you know, artists and, and um, African-American uh artists but <laughs> it, again delivery and shipping and all this other stuff kind of make it a bit more challenging um than we would like it to be uh to support so any kind of easier avenue to get access is really helpful it's really good so peace and many blessings to you guys i hope you're doing well i might actually do a reading with this um deck so uh stay tuned for that so many blessings to you i just wanted to add because i forgot this one upstairs the genesis edition playing cards um these are also made uh by a black creator as well is her name is sheena whiteley and I came across um, this deck uh, on a support black owned businesses website, <laughs> which is it's just so cool and so cute. And um, because of it, I've been back reading playing cards, which I actually really do enjoy um, 
reading playing cards tarot is nice but i like playing cards a lot for if you're looking for very direct straight to the point kind of answers they work, they work really good in that way and also um if you are the type that you find like too much imagery to be a bit of a distraction for you then playing cards are a good way to go because obviously you don't have images so much apart from on the court cards and um you can just kind of let your intuition run free with uh, playing cards as well depending on how you choose to read them so you can read them in a very sort of simple straight to the point kind of way but then obviously you can also get a lot of information um, sort of using these as prompts for uh, intuitive readings as well so that's kind of how I choose to use them so yes this is a cute one I'm going to put all the details um, of where you can find the different decks that I've shown you guys um, in the description box so peace and many blessings to you I'll be seeing you bye